In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a pattern in Grasshopper and Rhino and apply that pattern to an object in 3ds Max using an unwrap UVW map. So what I've done here is just make a pretty uh, basic form. I started with a plane, I added a ripple modifier, a bend modifier, and then I used an edit poly to delete some of the polygons, um, and then added a mesh smooth. And then if you want to start to create a pattern and apply that pattern specifically to a certain area of the object, you have to use what's called an unwrap UVW map modifier. To do that, you just find it from the drop down here. Once you've applied the UV unwrap UVW map modifier, you just hit this open UV editor and will open a dialog that shows um, your map. I've already flattened my map, so what you'll have to do to flatten your map is just select down here on the bottom left the polygons and then you'll select all your polygons just drag over and select all your polygons and then go to mapping flatten mapping that will break the map into flattened sections um, and then put all of those sections within your UV tile you have to make sure all of the sections are in the UV tile here and then you'll notice if you start selecting some of these so if I select element which is this button here I can select each of these segments if you select one and then look at your um, 3ds Max form, you can see which polygons those relate to. So if you want to start to generate a pattern on these polygons, you just want to be aware that this is the unflattened portion of that part of the geometry. You'll also notice when you select this, you see these blue lines over here. Those are lines that uh, attach to this map. So if you really want to get into it, you can start moving using the move, rotate, and even scale tools up here. You can start moving these around your tile space so you can generate patterns that go from one piece of the map to the next piece of the map. And you can actually go in here, if you deselect the element and select the vertices, you can actually start moving um, the vertices of these maps so you can really get them close together and then generate a pattern that goes over two or more of these different patches. But for now, we're just going to flatten this map and, and use the um, what the computer gave us. So once it's unflattened or unrolled you can just uh, close it and then you should see the seams of that map appear on your geometry. Let's go ahead and open that again. Um, the next thing we want to do is go to tools and you might have to select all of your faces. Sometimes you do for some reason but you can select all your faces and then go to tools, render UVW template and um, it's really important you increase the width and height of these. These are the resolution of the template that you're rendering. So you're going to render out like a JPEG and you want the resolution to be high enough that you can see the line work when you're tracing over it in Rhino. So I'll use, I'll use 8000 by 8000 which you know is a pretty good range. Um, that's like a, maybe a 17 inch by 17 inch image. Go ahead and render that. <clears throat> and then once you render that you can go into Rhino. Alright, now I'm in Rhino, so the first thing I want to do is draw a rectangle and make sure you're drawing an equilateral rectangle so the width and the length is the same. Um, it doesn't really matter what size it is, the, the size will correspond to the, you know, the sliders that you use in Grasshopper, um, so just be aware of that. And so I drew, I think I drew like a 20 inch by 20 inch rectangle. And then you want to go to background bitmap and then place your bitmap and then trace um, so if I hit place here, you can then trace, you browse for the bitmap. Which is here. And then you can place it by dragging and snapping to that rectangle. And that will then place the image. So this is the background that you want to start drawing um, your pattern over. So I've gone ahead and I've done that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off uh, the bitmap. And I've gone ahead, I've traced this one patch here. And then I use this really basic kind of definition over here that takes a curve, uh, makes a patch of it, populates the curve with different points. Um, I then delete some of those. Or I, I make a, sorry, a, a Delonoi mesh out of it. I then get the face boundaries of the mesh. I then trim anything that goes overlaps this outer frame um, and then I call based on certain factors like the size of the the um, triangle so I only keep some of the larger triangles 
um, and then I offset and I do a few other things. So I end up with this kind of pattern like this, and this is the pattern I'm going to use to apply back to that geometry. So once you have that, you can then file, save as, and save it as an AI file. And we'll go back into Illustrator. And I've already gone ahead and changed my line weights, but you can see this is the basic map. If I turn that off, um, I want everything to be a color. So anything, so you'll see in this map here, anything that is within this grid will be applied to the form in 3ds Max. So if you do anything that's out here, it's not going to matter. But anything that covers these, uh, this grid here will be applied to the geometry. So you could do a pattern on each of these patches and those will appear in Max. For now, I'm just going to do a general color um, behind everything. You can see I then have uh, the different um, lines that I generated in Grasshopper. Okay, so that's my basic one. I can actually turn off the border because I don't want that to render on my geometry. I just want to make sure that this fits within um, let me get this out here. Well, anyway, so I just want to make sure that that fits inside of that patch and then that will apply to the object in Max. Okay, so I have my pattern. Um, I'm going to save this as the diffuse because I want this to be the color of the um, of the pattern that I apply to the object in 3ds Max. Um, I've also gone ahead and I've made a few additional maps. So I made a um, a black and white map, and I'm going to use this as a cutout or opacity map. So I want these to be windows on my form. So I'm going to go ahead. Anything that's black will actually cut out of the geometry. I've also made one additional map, which is a reflection map. So in a reflection map, it's the opposite. Anything that's black will not reflect, and anything that's white will reflect. So I want these highly reflective kind of wind, uh, mirrors that are surrounding the windows. So I made these two additional maps, and just export those as different file names. So I export this as the reflect uh, uh, JPEG, and the other one is the opacity JPEG. OK, so now we're back in Max. So all we have to do now is go into our material editor which is here, and make a new material. So I've already gone ahead, I've made a new material. I'm using V-Ray. So to make a new material, you just double click, and that brings in the new material. And then if you want to start to plug these maps into that material, you just drag from the channel, select standard bitmap, and then browse for that bitmap. So you can see here, I saved um, reflect, opacity, diffuse, and bump. So you just do that for each of your channels. So I plugged in the diffuse there, the reflect there, the bump there, and opacity there. And then all you have to do is apply it to your object. So to apply it, you can drag from here and drag it onto your object, like this. Or you can select your object, select the material, and then hit this button right here. All right, so once you've applied it, you can see it actually applies it. You can see it's actually... Um, using that opacity so you can see right through the object and then you can also see it's using the reflectivity here and this is just in my preview so if I go ahead and I render this now you can see it applies that pattern perfectly um, on the geometry